There can be no debate that in 2022, we have more ways to communicate our thoughts, our appreciation, our love, or even our hatred than ever before. One can certainly argue, however, that for all our advances, we've also lost much of our connection with time-honored ways and traditions. The giving of flowers is one such custom that many people no longer truly understand. Why do we do it? What is it all supposed to mean, if anything? As always, though, we have the answers. Join us as we explore the history of the giving of flowers while we build a Lego bouquet on this episode of The Brick Historic. The importance placed on flowers and plants in general dates back to ancient Greek mythology. The story of Persephone is perhaps the best known use of flora in the lore of the time. Demeter, the mother of Persephone, was the goddess of harvest and fertility. When Persephone was taken by Hades and made queen of the underworld, Demeter left her duties, causing the world to dry up. To save life on earth, a deal was eventually brokered where Persephone would spend half of her year with her mother and half with Hades. Demeter was overjoyed when her daughter was with her and thus tended to her responsibilities with enthusiasm, causing life on earth to renew and thrive. When her daughter was in the underworld, however, Demeter would abandon her obligation and the world would turn to death decay. Thus the seasons of spring, summer, autumn, and winter came to be, and the symbolism brought by a blooming flower was set. Ancient Egyptians also placed great emphasis on flowers in their culture. For example, pharaohs would adorn their carts with flowers before going into battle. The common people of the state would often wear flowers that grew along the Nile. The lotus flower held especially deep meaning for the people as an emblem of rebirth, as the flower would close at night and then reopen in the morning. Around the 15th century, women in harems began to use flowers and other items as part of a secret system of communication. When combined with various rhyming words, a language of sorts was formed that was mainly used by the women to talk to their love interests outside of the harem. By the 1700s, this peculiar new vocabulary started to catch the attention of the Europeans, especially the English and the French. There's a lot one could say about the Victorian era, both good and bad. One of the most curious concepts of the time, though, was the idea that it was not considered polite to verbally express one's emotions. Borrowing on the knowledge and ideas previously discovered in Turkey, the people of the time developed the idea of floriography, a full floral language. Meaning became attached not only to the flowers themselves, but also to their arrangement. The floral linguistics were taken to an even higher level, as how the flowers were physically presented to the recipient became part of the message. For example, a bouquet of red roses might have been an expression of love. However, if that same bouquet was presented upside down, then it was an expression of rage. As floriography blossomed, entire books were written on the subject to help those in the Victorian era be able to best communicate in this way. Flowers, of course, still play an important role for us today, though the set meanings behind each flower and arrangement that were so prevalent in the past is arguably less a part of it all now. More importance seems to be placed in modern times on the recipient's own perception of beauty and personal tastes when gauging their appreciation of the gift. That change aside, flowers remain an almost universally appreciated offering. The floral industry does over $5 billion annually in sales in the United States alone, and the advent of the internet has made the gifting of flowers even easier, so it's a tradition that is certain to remain for generations to come. There is no denying that flowers and the gifting of them has played a considerable role in the human experience throughout the centuries. The purpose and meaning behind the custom has varied from culture to culture and from era to era, but the importance of flowers has remained extremely high since the early times. Of course, in modern times, we have more fun and creative ways to gift flowers, such as the Lego bouquet we've built in this video. While it may not be the real thing, it's nevertheless fun and whimsical, so we'll be gifting this bouquet to our mother. We hope she enjoys it as much as we enjoyed building it. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Brick Historic. If you have not already done so, please do smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you will be alerted when we post new videos. Thank you again, and until the next time we see you, thank you for watching.